how to quickly and professionally kern text in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. And in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about, guess what, kerning. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be talking about kind of the space uh, in between letters relative to all the other letters. Not to be confused with tracking, which is the space in between individual letters. So this is kind of the overall, uh, how does the word look, um, that kind of thing. And I've got three examples here. We've got Gotham font, this is Arizona, and this is Source Code Pro, just to show you some differences in how this plays out. Now, what I like to point out first is probably the most helpful thing, which is the um, settings for kerning within any one of these words um, within your font that you can change quickly. So you're not having to go through and do every little letter if you don't want to. Now, I think it's probably best if you do, but we all know that time is a real thing and we have to keep our time down for our clients to keep costs down and we just don't want to be spending forever uh, kerning every little thing. Now if it's a logo and it's one word I'd say kern it to perfection but if it's a whole lot of words you might try this. And that is under your character tab and if you don't see that window type character you can also hit control T that'll pop up here. Um, if you've got it selected you can come over here to this kerning setting and go between optical and auto. So watch if I hit auto, you'll see it the shifts ever so slightly. If I back up, that's optical. So the optical is going to bring everything usually closer together, going to be a little bit tighter kerning than auto. Auto is just kind of uh, kind of ugly in some fonts, to be honest. If you look down here, you'll see auto in this uh, source code, which has a little bit of serif action going on here. This has got uh, a lot of space in between the N and the I, and not nearly as much between this N and I. But up here under, under optical, it's a lot tighter. Now there's still more space here, but that's because you've got this little serif hanging out. So it's more of an optical illusion that these words or these letters are close to each other and they're properly spaced because you don't really want to do a mathematical spacing when you're kerning. You want to do a visual spacing. And so um, the only time you really don't want to use optical um, is whenever you're using a, uh, a brush or a script font, font of some sort. So here is a great example. This is Arizona regular. And under optical, which looks better on these two, um, it looks worse. And you'll see if I zoom in, you've got funky spaces between letters. So on under auto, usually a brush or script font will actually look better. But even then, I'm going to just show you, if I come in here, there's a little bit of a space here between these two letters. So I'm just going to select this and maybe bump it up one, two. There you go. And it's a little bit better. And I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Select the space in between these two letters. Hit one, two, I think one looks better than two. There's nothing that's perfect. As you can see, there's a little bit of a bump here and a bump here. But when you're backed out, no one's ever going to know. Same thing with between the N and the G. I'm going to click on this and just click back one or two, maybe three. Three looks good. And so there you go. Another trick, <clears throat> if you're doing this um, and you're, you're changing this value, you don't actually have to come over here to click up and down. You can click in the area. Hold Alt, and then left and right uh, on your left and right arrow keys. Do like that. And that's going to move you by 20 each time. So I'm negative 20, negative 40, negative 60, negative 80. So let's just go with negative 80. Uh, I'm going to do negative 100 there. going to do this. Let's just see. This is a quick way to current things and just kind of visually do it. I'm going to back out and look at that. See, I actually think that looks better than the optical. But who has time to do that You know, on every single word? Again, I think optical is great if you've got a whole bunch of text and you just don't want any weird, um, massive spaces in between text that you would get from auto. See, it's just too much space here. And if you have that a massive paragraph of text that has this, that's just going to look really silly. 
So another thing I want to show you guys that you can use to get some practice is if you go to type.method.ac. This is a little game that will get you used to kerning. And so what this does is you can uh, come in here and drag the innermost uh, letters. So the outside ones can't be dragged. So you just kind of drag them to where they are, you know, visually kerned, and then hit, hit done, see where you are. All right, I got 100 out of 100 on that one. See, it could have come to the left just a little bit with the A, but the V was like spot on. Nice. Go to the next one. You've got type. And we'll drag that Y, maybe there, the P here. And hit done. I could have gone over a little bit more, but again, I got 100. Nice score. I usually try to get like an 80 or something on these. Um, but yeah, you guys can practice this yourself. Come in here and see, okay, went a little bit far that time. Still got 100, nice placement on the E. And then it, they just get a little bit harder. They add more letters and then add some more of these funky um, type, uh, funky fonts that make it a little bit harder to kern. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Go. Ooh, really close. 100, got 100 on that one, nice. So anyway, you can do that in here. And one little trick that I want to show you too, though, is when you've got these fonts, and let's see if I can find one. Let me type this up real quick. Um, let's just do that. Rook and Rook. So with, with uh, kerning, when it comes to a, a solid edge like this versus a rounded edge, you usually want to be a little bit closer than if you, say, have a... Um, solid edge versus a solid edge. So like this O, this is under optical again. This O is actually closer to the edge of this L than this L is to the K. But that's okay because you have all of this extra space that's up, up, up and above that makes it look like they're equally spaced. Anytime you have a rounded edge, you just want to come a little bit closer than if you don't. And so the same thing would be if, let's say that R is on a K, uh, next to a K. This space should be greater than the space here. And it is, as you can see. If we get up close, if I draw a little box here, let's just make it a color you can see. And if we come up here, you'll see that that, that K is significantly closer than the O. Just know that when you're kerning, always kern a rounded edge a little bit closer than you would if it was a flat edge like this. Okay, guys, that's the end of the tutorial. Leave some comments in the section down the comment section down below. Let me know what you thought about that, and I will see you guys in the next video.